Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment, serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. As always, I have a fabulous show for you. Do not forget to go to heathermcdonald.net and get all my latest tour dates in your city or maybe you want to go on a trip. As I said, we've got Las Vegas in September. We've got Denver, uh, May 17th and 18th. Oh, so many. Pachanga with Chris Frangiola. Everything is at heathermcdonald.net and also that's where you join the Patreon. Okay. Drake, not my son, Drake the singer. I talked about on the last episode how there's a rap battle thing going on with Kendrick Lamar and that they're dissing each other and saying things about each other in their different songs that are not flattering and accusatory. They're saying, you know, Drake likes younger women and and things like that. And it just it's a it goes back and forth and there's a lot to the songs. But here's the latest juicy part which is scary. I hope this guy is okay, but there was a man, part of his security team, who was shot like right near his house. They think in Toronto, they think this is in front of Drake's house. They think that it is, that it was a drive-by. The police that are investigating it are aware of the Kendrick Lamar rap battle thing. So we don't know if he's involved at all, if this is a crazy fan, if this is Maybe they were actually really just trying to get the security guard. Maybe he has a beef of his own or something, or maybe it was random. Maybe who, we don't know yet, but um, the guy was shot in the chest. He is in the hospital, and I hope that he's okay. But that is insane that that just happened. Update on the very sad and mysterious death of this pastor's wife named Micah Miller. JP is the pastor, and the church has cut ties with him as of yet. However, the latest news, he said my my wife had uh, died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. There was a lot of controversy, a lot of things about it that didn't seem right. She has shared information with others. There is a supposed diary slash binder of all the abuse that she endured by him. We also found out that Prior to marrying her, he was married to a woman with five children who then he left her for, but he met her when she was only 14. So there's an element of grooming. She still was, you know, quite religious in her videos and stuff that she shared. She did study, uh, suffer from some level of mental illness. She did spend a time in, in a mental hospital. She did believe that he was stalking her. She did try to get a you know a restraining order against him. There was so much stuff that made the the death of you know suicide questionable. And then there was stories saying, oh, the shot was from the back of the head. How she, could she kill herself? Well, today the news did come out from the authorities at in this town, which is um, Robinson County, is where um, this happened, and they are saying it was self inflicted. But now there's information saying that this county is um, there's a lot of uh, alleged corruption happening there. And maybe this isn't all true. But regardless, this guy is coming off really weird and awful. And now all of his sermons are like available online. A lot of people have posted them because he was always filming them and streaming them because he's like this young preacher. And he had this girl that people said, oh, we don't. She said, oh, I'm not his girlfriend. Well, she's also a widow, this girl, and her name is Susie, Susie Skinner, and her husband has died as well, and he married them. JP married the two of them, and then he died, and now they are supposedly together, and the way her husband died was he was a paraplegic or quadriplegic, and he was in a wheelchair. And somehow he fell in a pool and drowned. And then JP, the pastor, gave the 
um, eulogy for it and 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 ran the service and that whole thing was odd. He's like, I'm so excited to be here and and the video is almost like he's toasting him at a birthday party, not really celebrating his life. So it's very, very suspicious, lots of suspicious things about this. And this final bit of information saying, yes, in fact, it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We don't know if that'll make the story end or if more will come out um, about this guy in general. But that's where that is. So I want to give an update on that. Okay. And now for our very juicy interview with a Hollywood legend. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Very excited to have a first time guest. (laughs) Multi, multi, oh my God, won so many SAG Awards, Emmys, Golden Globes, st- best known from Will and Grace, but so <laughs> many other things. Megan Mullally, welcome to Juicy Scoop. Oh, so first excited. but not last time. Wow. On the show. I love your hair. Thank you. And it's so funny because you you have such like a, a youthful, young, like hip way about you. But when you were doing the show 20 years ago, it was like... You were such like an older acting late. Like it's weird. <laughs> like when I was like, when I look at other things that you're in, I'm like, people must not even really recognize you that much when no. you're out because no. it was such a different look. No, it's funny. Like Nick always gets recognized because I was, for men too, there's who, like who is nowhere to run. Nowhere. How many years? Remind everybody. Um, well, need to go to almost twenty five. Nick Offerman. Yes. Yes. So he gets recognized because you know when you're a guy, it's like. That's kind of what it is. He has but a distinct no, look. I don't get recognized, but if I start talking, then I sometimes do. But I also feel like your character um, from Will and Grace, that you were Karen. <laughs> Karen, what a name. Um, but was your voice, did you, okay, let's talk about how yeah. you got well, the job first of and all, how the you way created. I, the, the look thing. Yeah, that, like, that's interesting. Because did you come up with that yourself in reading the character or what? No, that was... That was more their thing. But I don't, you know, I don't dress like that. I've never dressed right, like that. Right. That's what I think is. That is exactly the way my mom dressed pretty much, though. Like uh-huh. very Nancy Reagan, very Gloria Vanderbilt, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> on a budget. But you'd never know it. And um, I never did that. And then, of course, the hair and all that is not the way. It's just not my thing. Like I don't even wear makeup in real life and so yeah they would always say at the end of the season like do you want to buy any of the clothes I was like nope <laughs> I'm like are you sure about all these gorgeous you know designer things I was like no no so, use uh, so your background was you know you I saw that you were in a ballerina mm-hmm. and then got into acting and of course you got a ton of guest roles before this killer role of Will and Grace and I also read that you were up for Elaine in Seinfeld and tested for that. Yes. So what I I know what it's like to come to the what testing means is it's like you and two other people and they do your contract and they and what's what's so heartbreaking about it is before you do the test you have to do the contract so they're you have these calls with your agents where they're like and then in year five you'll get this much <laughs> like you're like do I am even doing this I might not get it you I know, know. <laughs> it's horrible it's yeah. it's really yeah it's torture um, but it's funny because I actually went to college with Julia Lou Dreyfus she's so great she's great and yeah. so I I still know her and everything she's amazing but yes I was up for that and, and um, now when you said you went to college with her and you see people when you go on auditions because I always remember this too and there was a weird part of me that I wish I wasn't like this back then but I was where you're like happy to see your friend but you're not happy to see your friend you know what I mean you're like oh hey and there's always that conversation between everybody and one person's re you know what always got me crazy is the girl that would be reading a full book before she's about to go in she's not looking at her sides (laughs) and I'm like that must be a psych thing where it's like I'm I don't not even going to let yeah. this bother me. I'm in chapter <laughs> I am four. so ready. Of, yeah. Like, isn't yeah. that weird? And then there's the girls that spend the entire prep time catching up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like they're not ready at all. Yeah. yeah. I know. No, but, you know, I didn't see Julia there because I think that what happened was there were a couple of us that were going to test and then they ended up offering it to her because she had just done a show, um, I think, for this, I guess it was. That was NBC, right? Yeah. yeah. So she'd just done some other show, and then they were just like, oh, let's just offer it to her. So yeah. A known quantity. Yeah. Now, how much time between that that show starting and Will and Grace was there? I don't 
don't know. Will and Grace started in 1998, and I'm not sure what year. Because I think that was more like was definitely like two, no, like 91, 92. I think it was. I think it was, bef- maybe, it was definitely Matt. before 92. Yeah. I think it was like, no- or maybe it was around there. Yeah. 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 So it was a while. But I had done, you know, like a few shows that never went anywhere, that like 13 episodes or something. And then I had gone to New York to do a couple of musicals. I did. Revival of Greece in 94. And then I did this. What did you play? I played Marty, uh-huh. who sings Freddie, My Love. Oh. So which, now are you. And then I did How to Succeed. And that was kind of a big break for me because it was the female lead opposite Matthew Broderick. And it was a good production. And then from there, I kind of. I would do it. Yeah. From, from there, that kind of led to Will and Grace. I think. So did you consider yourself a singer or just musical theater? Like. What was your singing background? I to think be singing is really my best thing. Or it was, yeah. yeah. It was always kind of my best thing. And, you know, I should have probably moved to New York um, after college and auditioned for, you know, Broadway shows. But um, I was dating this guy <laughs> in Chicago. And um, he so wait, said... where did you go to college again? Northwestern. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. And then I did theater in Chicago for a few years. And then he said, well, let's just go to... Los Angeles and see what that's like. And then we'll go to New York. Because he's an actor, too. He's an actor, too. Uh Uh-huh. And then he left me in Los Angeles after two weeks. (laughs) And so then um, I ended up, I got got an agent right away, and I got all these auditions. And I was like, well, I guess I'll just stay. And so I did. So when he left, you mean he broke up with you, or he left L.A. after two weeks? He did not break up with me for about two years, during which time he refused to have sex with me. So finally, I had to kind of, you know, put take matters into my own hands. Literally? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so what was the deal? Is oh, he, he... Is he married he was, to a lovely man today? Or what is going on? He was very close to his parents and his... I don't know. I think... I Do you know, know where he is today? Yes. He lives somewhere in, like, the Pasadena area, and he's married and... To a woman? To a woman, mm-hmm. and I think you know, very happily married. He's he's a really nice guy. He really is. Um, but that particular that might not have been his finest moment. Yeah. But now, then, when you you know become a household name and everything, do you did you ever hear from him? Do you think he was like watching your episodes with his? I talked to him. Um, we got back in touch maybe about five years ago. And his his wife actually came to see me and something, and we started talking. And then, text I started texting with him, and then we did talk on the phone once. And so the wife like came to your show, and you gave her like a green room pass to say hello. Yeah, yeah, and she was oh, really oh, so great. you were like fine. And yeah, was, yeah, she was really nice. I mean, it's been like one hundred and fifty seven yeah. years, so yeah. I tried to get in touch with my old boyfriend. You did? Yeah. And <laughs> from how long ago? You know what's so weird about it now? Okay, so um, I have two boys, and they're uh, 21 and 18. And I know that you guys don't have kids. And I think that is so wonderful that that is becoming a normal thing. Always should have been normal. Always. One of the nicest things someone said to me is that my my friend who got married um, since got divorced. But she always was like, I'm childless by choice. I don't. I just don't see it in my future. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's so great, whatever. And one day she goes, do you know you're like the only person that didn't challenge me on it? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, probably because I have them. Like, probably because I realize, <laughs> like, if you're not dying to have them, then you shouldn't have them. And you can have such a full, fabulous life and such a life of non-worry. Because I was thinking, so just earlier today, my son, he's so responsible and so great. And he was not answering his phone. And he cuts, he helps cut some clips and stuff for me for social media. And he's in Arizona. He's supposed to come out tomorrow because he just finished his third year of ASU. And, you know, after one hour, I was kind of like, oh, my God, like, this is it. Like, he's gone. He's died. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> then you go to these things and I just go. And so then my other son, who's 18, I'm like, do you have... I didn't realize I didn't have the location because my husband has it. So I just always ask and he'll go, oh, Drake's an hour away, whatever. But I never did that on my phone. And I kind of don't want to do it because I think it can make some moms crazy. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, Brandon, I just want you to know that like you better always have your phone charged. And if I answer, if I call you, it's a proof of life. You just have to say I'm in class or whatever. Just you don't have to call me back that day. It's because I'm having a weird feeling. 
Anyway, he was asleep and his phone died. It was not a big deal, but like, ugh. I know, I know. I'm kind of like that with Nick a little bit too, though. You get nervous about him. Mm-hmm, yeah. I do. Yeah. Well, everyone and, has some people yeah. in their life. That, and because of the phone, before the phone, I know. You wouldn't hear from someone for a day sure. and you're like, oh, they just have to get back to their answer machine. But because there's a phone now, you don't hear back from someone for 15 minutes and you're like, well, they've, they're they dead and yeah. I, what will I wear to the funeral? It's so true. It's just like it's the worst. So true. This Juicy Scoop episode is sponsored by Rakuten. Are you guys ready to shop? Rakuten's Big Give Week is back. Get 15% cash back at hundreds of stores, including places like Ulta. You can get Splendid, Good American. Rakuten is how in the know shoppers get the best savings. They shop the brands they love and earn cash back on top deals. During Big Give Week, May 6th to May 13th, the cash back rates are even bigger. I'll be shopping for fashion and beauty. You could save on everything you need for summer, like clothing, outdoor gear, and travel. Membership is free, and when you sign up and shop today, you get an extra 10% cash back boost. That's an extra 10% cash back on top of the 15% cash back. You won't see higher cash back rates than these. Go to Rakuten.com or download the Rakuten app. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. Shoppers get it. Are you aware of the revolution that has taken place in fasting that helps weight loss, mental and physical performance, and gut health? It's called Prolon. Everybody knows fasting is healthy, but oh my God, fasting can also be challenging, but not with Prolon. Prolon is fasting with food. That's right. It's fasting, but with food. It all starts with Prolon's five-day program. Snacks, soups, and beverages are all designed to activate your body's fasting state, and it's unlike anything you've ever experienced. Researched and developed for decades at the University of Southern California Longevity Institute and backed by leading U.S. medical centers, Prolon helps promote healthy blood sugar support, cardiovascular health, and reduce abdominal fat. If I was going to start a nutritional program, Prolon is exactly what I would use. It's convenient and it works. Right now, Prolon is offering Juicy Scoopers 10% off their five-day nutritional program. Go to ProlonLife.com slash Juicy Scoop. That's P-R-O-L-O-N Life.com slash Juicy Scoop for this special offer. That's ProlonLife.com slash Juicy Scoop. But you know what you said about not having kids? I mean, that's really true that um, it. I used to say that it was the last taboo to yeah. not have children because nobody does it, you know, yeah. or nobody did it, certainly from my generation. And uh, now it's like you said, it's getting more and more common. But I was just saying to somebody yesterday how so many of my friends are so... Like they love their kids and, and I'm talking about really good mothers and the whole thing who just be like, oh, you know, they just and their kids are like grown or almost grown. And they're like, oh, God, you're so lucky you didn't do it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, so it is interesting. I and mean, I, I think everybody it all works out the way it's supposed to work out. Yes. But I always no. say it's the worry. Like when someone goes, will I regret it if I don't have children? So like I've sometimes feel girls come up to me like, I don't know if I have that urge and. You know, and I say, hey, listen, you know, if if you're happy and you want to go off birth control and it happens, then great. But also you're in that great place that if it doesn't happen, you're not going to go to the umps degree and be heartbroken and all that because you don't care that much. So just like mm-hmm. kind of put it out there. And if it doesn't work out, then how great for you, if it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think also if you're in a place financially where you can't afford to do all the to, to yeah. you know, have your own life and yeah. feel like you're able to be creative and stuff, then that could make you a lot more resentful. I did read a study years ago, this is probably 10 years ago, that's like some crazy statistic, like 78% of women who had kids said they wish they hadn't had them. Oh, really? And I I sound like I'm anti-having children. I'm not. I'm just kind of to your point saying like, I just never had an organic you know, burning desire to have children. So I think that's really interesting and it's what people don't talk about because it's like I had a, a, such a burning desire mm-hmm. and like knew that I was like, I remember one time like I was like 26 or 27 and I wasn't in a relationship and I was like, well, even if I'm 
because I used to come home and like turn on the TV and whatever, watch like an old rerun of Jerry, you know, Jerry Springer. <laughs> and I was like, you know, even if I'm by myself, like I'm going to have, the, I'm going to be a mom. Like I just was like, I will, ha- I just, from the moment I was little, it was like baby dolls. Like I was very into wanting that experience. So for me, I would have made it happen. And then for other people, um, that struggle with it. My sister was struggling with fertility and she had a friend who had no desire to have kids. And I said, does it make you envious of her? And she goes, yes, Hmm. you know, because she's very happy in her marriage and it's nothing that either of them wanted. And she never had to go through the journey of wanting it and not being successful Mm -hmm. at it or Mm -hmm. whatever, you know, it's just, um, but no, I think it's, it's so interesting and so great that, yeah. you know, people need to really tap into what they want in life. My mom wanted to have literally 10 children. Like, she would have been happy having 10 How children. How many did she have? Just me. And uh-huh. she, she could get pregnant. She had a lot of miscarriages. Fine. She So she couldn't get pregnant for many, many years. And then she had me. And then she had a lot of miscarriages. Yeah. So, but, you know, then I got So the did full... she ever give you any pressure well, I to think, have kids? I think she would have been thrill right if I had a child but you know the other thing is I never you know I was 41 when I met Nick right so and he's, a, he's a little younger than you right he's more than a little young, younger he's t- almost 12 years younger nice yeah. hot and um we, uh, the cast of Will and Grace was on Oprah once and she said he's younger and I said yeah 11 and a half she goes 11 and a half <laughs> <laughs> so now I say 12 I was really like humiliated, publicly humiliated by Oprah. Um, so anyway, yes. Yeah, so I, I was a little. It was a little late in the day for me to have kids. Although I have to say, we did try, uh, kind of the old fashioned way for, you know, like a year or so. But it, it just wasn't meant to be. Yeah. And, you know, we both have been so busy and everything that I think Nick, who probably. If he'd met and married somebody else, would have had kids, you know. Um, he was never like I think he w- it went that far. Like, but he wasn't like absolutely dead set on having children, and so he has never been like traumatized about not having children either. I think, and I think this is something that not a lot of people say either. I think most guys. Um, wouldn't I think it's really rare that that's the the thing that makes the guy say no to a woman mm-hmm. like leaves her while they're married or oh we got this close and found out you didn't want to have kids I'm out most guys because they're not the ones caring it or whatever they can be a great father it's just a different thing where a woman if she really wants to have a child and a guy's like absolutely not either she's like well i'll change him which is a horrible idea yeah or she is like well then goodbye because i really want to have that kid or sometimes when a woman marries an older guy and they're like the second wife they'll say oh i don't want him and then they have and then they make sure well you better give me one or i'm leaving and then the guy's like god i didn't know i was gonna have a baby at 53 you know Mm -hmm. Well, you know, so it's like good that everyone's like kind of on the same page and then that there's enough there that whatever happens. But the whole reason I got on this was not to talk about all this, but I was going to say, so looking now that my boys are older, it's such a weird perspective to understand like when you're in high school and you're a girl and you like a boy or post-college or whatever, like, oh, I wonder what they're thinking and da, da, da. And now that I like have the boys, I'm like, when I tried to find this old boyfriend of mine and he was like, uh, he was like, oh, hey, how are you? Whatever. And I like wanted to talk to him more because I just wanted to know what was going on in his life. <laughs> and he was like, uh, why? I don't know why you're trying to get a hold of me. Like we dated when you were th- 30 years ago. Like he was a little bit rude, but he wasn't <laughs> rude. He was right. Like I broke his heart. Oh, you broke I broke his heart. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, hey, it's me again. Like, <laughs> and I'm married and I have no intention of like fucking you. I just kind of wanted to like figure well, out what you were like. part of your life. I was just curious because you weren't anywhere on social media. We found, oh. I had someone do some research. He wasn't married. And I was just kind of like, oh my God, we did have such a fun time. I just didn't want a serious boyfriend at that time. But I also like completely broke your heart. And now that I have boys that age, if some girl did that to them, I would be like, fuck that bitch. Like, it's so, what's so weird when you start raising boys, because for your whole life as a girl, you're like, 
you know, your girls are like, kick him to the curb and fuck him. And blah, blah, blah. and then when you have them, you're like, what did that bitch say to you? Like, it's like a completely different thing. Um, and I'm like, of course he didn't want it. Why would you want to deal with me? Right. And I'm a comedian. He's like, I don't need you to fucking put me in your act or something. I get that. You know, it's like. Right. Uh, okay. So getting back to Will and Grace. So Will and Grace was such a great script Mm -hmm. and i i can't remember if i heard this on a talk show or if i was told in person but the story that i heard of how the show came about was whoever was the creators of it were pitching um a show about um let me think it was like yeah they were pitching a show about like a couple that then had a best friend couple that was a gay guy and a girl. And then that said, that's the show we'd rather have is the couple that's the gay guy and the girl, not these other people. Yeah, it was this guy, Warren Littlefield, who ran NBC back in the oh, day. Yes, okay. And he's, he was great. And yeah. he was the one who said that. And and yeah. everybody bridled against it. Everybody else said, no, no, you can't do that. You can't have gay people, you know. I know, but anywhere. it seems so crazy now, but it was so groundbreaking yeah it was the first i mean so ellen yeah had come out her character had come out on her show several seasons in yeah yeah and immediately got canceled right and so then uh but she really did set the stage yeah you know and then the only other gay character i could think of was um there was a a show called soap way back yes billy crystal's character was gay but that was a big ensemble and he was just one of the characters but that's all I can really think of. Well, you know, there was this other show that my mom loved, which was the original reality show. And they actually did a like. Oh, a, was it called like American Family? Yes. Yeah. And they were like this family in like, a, a, you know, Santa Barbara. And they brought in the cameras and it was PBS. Mm-hmm. And in it, like one of the I think one of the boys came out and then. But it was real life, and then the guy was having was cheating, and then they did like a movie about it recently, oh, maybe yeah. in the last ten years, and so that was just so like, oh my god, you know, like such a big deal, mm-hmm. and um, but no, I remember the Billy Crystal character in Soap. Yeah, mm-hmm. why did they call that show Soap? It wasn't a soap opera. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I can't, can't remember. Yeah, that's interesting. So. Um, Okay, so then did you – okay, so let's talk about the auditioning process. So did you get the script before and just prepare like you would any audition or – So I auditioned for Grace originally. Oh, okay. And they were like, no. And then I forgot all about it and, you know, weeks went by and I get this call like they want you to come in for this pilot, Will and Grace. I was like, I went in and they <laughs> said – they said, oh, it's for this other part. And I was like, what other part? I didn't even remember it. Uh-huh. So they sent it to me, and I was like, I don't like this part. Oh, really? I don't want to go Why in. didn't you like her? Well, it was totally different. It was not written the way it it, it evolved into the thing that we remember as right. the character of Karen. But the character of Karen was, I thought, very much like Christine Bransky's uh, she was the sidekick to somebody on um, S- Sybil, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. She, and it was very much like just this rich uh, sidekick best friend who had like a zinger here and there, but just did a lot of shopping and more a lot, of, which, you know, Karen did all of those things too, but there there wasn't anything very different. And I was like, I feel like Christine Bransky <laughs> already did that yeah. recently. And they were like, well, just go in. And so I went in and then they were like, well, they want, they want to test you at the network tomorrow and you're the only person. And I was like, so then the next the day, it was tomorrow, and it was an hour before the test and I was in my pajamas eating a plate of eggs and my agent called she was like are you going I was like I don't know wait why did you feel like you didn't want it because I didn't that's so interesting I didn't feel like I could bring anything to it you know anything different so when you went and auditioned the first time as the as the character of Karen how did you didn't dress like this or what I were you didn't dressing have in? any fancy clothes so I wore a vintage I wore a, a skirt that I had cut off with a pair of scissors below the knee uh-huh. black tights big platform shoes and um some kind of shirt and a vintage leopard print 
like really kind of bad like coat, you know, jacket coat. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I didn't have anything else that looked kind of fancy. But no, I really just thought like I was kind of over pilots at that point because, like I said, I was 41 and I had done a pilot like every year or a show that didn't go past seven episodes or 13 episodes. And I was kind of over it. And I think I was just like, if this isn't going to be funny or good, then what is the, you know, what's the point? Like get somebody who really like is dying to play this part. And so then I decided, you know, I obviously then did decide to like get up and change out of my pajamas and go over there and do it. And um, and even the pilot, I was like kind of, I mean, it was fun. And I, and Sean Hayes and I didn't have any scenes together, but oh, we like really? really hit it off. So you know, you're just off hit camera. It. Oh my gosh. Okay. And so, yeah. so that part was really fun. But then I was kind of in the scenes, like in the actual playing of the scenes, I was slightly miserable because I knew that it wasn't really that funny. And I couldn't, like, you know, you can't make it yeah. something that's not. And I wanted it to be, like, really funny and really different. And the other characters were really funny. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm the, I'm the least funny. So then over the course of, you know, then it got picked up. And, over and the- then how did you feel when you got picked up? Were you like, eh? Or were you like, okay, great. This will go for 13 episodes and exactly. then it'll get canceled and I got this check and well, who cares? Well, no, you know, something really funny happened. This guy, I can't remember his name now, but he was a guy who was like, I don't think he was working at the network, but he was like a really rich guy who was like a friend of somebody who was like running the network or something. And he came, he came to the set one day when we were shooting the pilot and he basically told us he gave his gold lighter to Deborah Messing, who was trying to light a cigarette, and he handed it to her, and she tried to hand it back, and he was like, keep it. And she was like, what? It was a Cartier lighter. And she, he, she was like, I can't keep it. And he was like, oh, you can keep it. This, this show's going to be around for, you know, a long time. And then when the show got picked up, he sent us all Cartier lighters. Anyway, so then we thought and he was just he, what, someone's we thought he friend? must know. Well, he was a friend of somebody who was like running the network. Oh wow! So we thought, oh, he must know what he's talking right. about, and or maybe he did work at the network, but he was also like a really rich guy in his own right. Yeah. And so then we, it did get picked up, and as it was kind of going along, I sort of started just instinctively because I'm not a very, I'm more of an instinctual actor than a I don't know I'm not as analytical about that kind of stuff or it's a little bit of both and I started kind of my voice started getting higher and higher and it's pretty high to begin with but it started getting even higher and then um it was about the 10th episode and I feel like it wasn't I I feel like um Michael Patrick King who did Sex in the City he he went on to do Sex in the City he had done a lot of stuff before that but he uh, was a writer on Will and Grace briefly, maybe for the first 10 or 12 episodes. And he had written this episode and it was, took place at the Ice Capades. Uh huh. And this was when I really remember the character like coming into being. I, I had brought in a lot of things like saying honey and just all the physical stuff yeah. and everything. And then we're sitting there at the Ice Capades and it's just, you know, the audience for the whole time and Karen's sitting there. And of course, Karen. And the ice capades do not mix. And they had sat this woman next to me, this um, atmosphere person, who was not... Like an extra, you mean? Yeah. A great beauty, yeah. yes, okay. shall we say. And she was not, you know, thin. And she was, you know, aesthetically not Karen's thing. Karen's and, type, yeah. Yeah. And so I just remember that episode, like, I had all these kind of sort of unwritten things with her where I was just, or, you know, kind of improvised. Where I was like... Honey, you look so pretty. Like I, I was yeah. giving her compliments, even though you knew that it was really costing Karen to like be in this close of proximity to somebody right. who wasn't. So yeah, that's when I remember it really like coming together for me. That is so fun because like with all the stuff that you guys would do. Now, how many seasons was it? Uh, it was eight seasons, and then we did a reboot that was three, and but we did two hundred and forty six episodes, and Jim Burroughs directed every episode. So then, was it always kind of like 
we're like then it becomes sort of just such a like a school type of thing where okay this is when we come back right like mm-hmm. oh we're starting this is when we take the the promo photos this is when we come back this is when the premiere date is this is when we go to upfronts and it must become it must have been feeling like such a fun um like routine of your life was it so strange when it ended yes it was you know i think as a as you know, working in the arts, it's so rare to have a job that goes for eight years. Yeah. Like if you're an accountant, that's a drop in the bucket. Right. Um, but to have an a, a job for a long period of time is is so so rare and it was great and it was, you know, like a twenty minute commute right over the hill and all of that stuff was so great. And yes, when it ended, it was very traumatic. Like We all cried a lot and, you know. And why did it end? Well, it shouldn't have ended. It should have gone for at least, I think it should have gone for two or three more seasons. Mm -hmm. I think they just thought, oh, you know how it is, the networks. They just think, well, there'll be like a billion more of these. Right. We don't need to keep paying these people a lot of money because there'll be so many more. And, of course, there weren't any others. And it's so interesting during that time of just the height of sitcoms where it was your show, Friends, Seinfeld. And then that's what I was auditioning for stuff and never giving getting it. And there were so many copycat, copycat shows where you just know they got the, the writing orders to do another Will and Grace. Yeah. Do a friends. Yeah. How about friends in San Francisco? How about friends in Alaska? So How many about friends, friends like, yeah. rip offs. Yeah. <laughs> and they were never funny. That's no. the problem is they just weren't funny. None right. of them were funny. And they, you know, now this sitcom is just kind of dead. I mean, there's may- there are maybe one or two that, you know, people watch, but hardly any multicam shows. That's kind of, but, you know, I think they just thought, oh, there'll be so many more and this will just go on forever and ever. But they should have, they should have tried to, they should have beat the horse till it was dead. You know, they should have really (laughs) run it into the ground until people were like, you know, bashing their television sets in with the baseball bat because they were so sick of it. You know, I think that's what they should have done. I can't even remember what happened Towards the end, she got married, right? We never see her husband. Don't we never see her husband? Isn't that one of the things? Uh, you never see him. You you saw like a few body parts. Like you saw his his foot one time and you saw like a really hairy arm. And right. You saw his shadow and the shadow was like gigantic. It was such, so yeah. great because you're just, you know, this little like gold digger that puts up with it. We don't. I love that we never saw the husband. I thought that was like a great move. Mm-hmm. And then wasn't it that... Grace did get married or was going to get married or... She married uh, Harry Connick Jr.'s character. Okay. And then they split up. And then I think Will married somebody and then he they split up. Um, and then at the end, there were all... There were like dream sequence. There was a dream sequence. I, I, yeah. But we all... It kind of cut to us all 20 years later, the oh. finale. And um, everybody looks older, except Karen looks exactly the same because she's had so much work done. <laughs> that was funny. And um, but That's I feel amazing. like I was so lucky on that show to have all these, you know. So, I mean, I had Sean Hayes, yeah. who's one of the great comedic actors right. ever. And but then I also did a whole season with Alec Baldwin, who is one of the great comedic actors yes. ever, and Leslie Jordan. Oh yeah, played Beverly Leslie, and you know. He and I had a very special working relationship. I also did a whole season with John Cleese that was like, it was the sixth season. And it, and, it, and I was basically in my own world where my character gets married to John Cleese or almost gets married to John Cleese. And my daughter-in-law is Minnie Driver. And the three of us had, I barely even saw the other cast members that year. It was so fun, though. It was Did you such ever think great... that they would ever do like a spinoff or something? Well, no. I mean, you know, not of that, but I mean, that would have been great. But, you know, they did. They had talked about spinning. I think they wanted to spin off Jack and Karen, but then I don't think Sean wanted to do it for some reason. But then they were going to spin off my character. Then they spun off Joey from Friends. And uh-huh. that did not go well. Right. And I think then they got cold feet. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
okay, let's talk about like award show. Now you would go to so many awards shows. How many you've won? You've been nominated for like how many Emmys? Eight um, or something? I don't know. Um, you won? won twice. Yes, but I was nominated maybe six times. I wasn't nominated for the first two seasons. So six, when you get nominated, because I know, you, and you've also oh, and won then I was, no, I was seven because I got nominated during the reboot too. Okay, so you've been nominated a bunch of times. You've gotten, you've won. You've gotten to go up and give your speeches. Yes. Also for SAG, also for Golden Globe. Yeah, I won four SAG awards. and Yeah. Now, how do you come up with your speeches and how do they change for each thing? The first time you were nominated, was that a more like unique speech? Because it's the first time and you may never come again. Yeah. You know, I always had this thing where... I didn't, as a viewer, I didn't like it when people thank their agents and managers and lawyers and stuff. Yeah, you're right. That is so boring. I never did that. But you're right. That's not good. It's actually not good content. You're right. My agent and manager weren't very (laughs) excited about that. But I, I just thought, like, what are we doing? I, I, I get it because yeah, like, why does a person in Oklahoma care about my lawyer? Yeah, you're right. They'd rather hear a more intimate story of so how I you got thought, there. Like, try to say something that is has that's more inspirational that will so that whoever's watching can apply it to their own lives. That's like a gen, general things, not about being an actress, but just about being like a human being. Although I will say I did break that rule once, which was the last time I won an Emmy. It was for the last season of Will and Grace. I thanked some of the crew because I thought they never get anything. And then they start playing me off, you know, Yeah, because that was boring. But um, <laughs> but yeah, that's the only time I got played off. But yeah, so I tried to think of things that were sort of could apply to anybody. And so what do you remember some of the things that you said that you liked? I think I, I remember my first Emmy speech more, which was I'm just saying like, you know, kind of like to boil it down to its essence, like dreams can come true or just, you know, keep keep the faith and persevere. And, you know, you never know what's right around the corner. And then how do you decide what to wear each time? Oh, God. You know, I could never get I could never get clothes sent to me. I never got a dress. Are when, you kidding? No, listen to this. When I hosted uh-huh. the SAG Awards, which was about five years ago. I hosted it. So you know I'm going to be on camera. Could not get one dress from so one wait, so designer. So you have to get a stylist to like go to Neiman's and pick out dresses like yeah. a regular person? No, or I have to go online. to I, I bought all my dresses. I had three or four dresses for the SAG Awards. I had bought them all online from like Saks or something. Well, do they cover those? No. Wait, do you get paid to do it? No. You didn't no. get paid to host the thing? To, to do the SAG award? Uh, I don't think, I don't know how much you get paid. They cover your hair and makeup. I don't think you really get oh paid. Oh, my gosh. I that's... think they pay for like, uh, it, so I had one writer, so he and I wrote all the jokes. Yeah. I think they paid my writer. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I could never get, um, the first Emmy, I did get a dress that, um, uh, this is a good story. So, Donna Karen, they were like, Donna Karen wants to make you a dress. And they sent me a sketch. And I was like, great. I mean, I was so starstruck. I would have worn like a, you know, a pickle barrel if they'd said that it was from Donna Karen, <laughs> even though I couldn't care less about Donna Karen or barely knew who it was. And so I wore this dress and it didn't fit very well. And my right boob was threatening to fall out for the entire <laughs> night. And I remember I saw Bill Maher backstage. He goes, you look great. And I said, I look like an old hooker on her last good night out. <laughs> Like, I just didn't, it didn't look that good. So. Did he laugh? Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay, you're, you're telling a story and I, you know, I understand it. And I've heard stuff like this from like 20 years ago or even 15 where, you know, and then it's like, I remember watching Rachel Zoe as a stylist and I was like, how do people get their dresses? And I remember this one girl was friends with this girl who was, um, this is like 15 years ago, was dating Ryan Seacrest. And. You know, he would say, come with me to all these things. But um, according to the story, people, Ryan, he was not helping her with her budget to get all these dresses. And she wasn't at a level to get anything for free. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, there's for the regular people, there's Rent the Runway. There's a lot of, you know, things like that. But 
But it's like, who are all these people that are just like, oh, my God, we'll help you put this whole look together? I mean, I I really like I I think people think that that is the case because they see it like on the Kardashians and Kim has that. But I think a lot of people that are in this game do not have access to that stuff. Well, you know, I had stylists over the years. I don't do it anymore. I had stylists over the years, and you have to pay the stylist a shitload of money, first of all. Like, how much do you think? So much. So, and, like, you'd get a stylist if you had an award ceremony. So, if you had an award season mm-hmm. back in the day where you're, you are going to, like, the Spirit Award, you're going to, like, 10 things, then wouldn't it – then you probably need to hire someone, and then they get all well, the dresses, and then could they get them for free or no? You still have to pay No. They, not for me. <laughs> They couldn't okay. get them for me. And these are big stylists. We're big stylists. And and the d- designers would just be like, Mm-mm, sorry. And so sometimes I would use um, <laughs> this woman, Lori Eskowitz, who did the costumes for Will and Grace. She was great. So sometimes she would help me. and But then I'd pay her separately, you know, yeah. as a stylist for, for an award show. But the thing about stylists is uh, not the woman from Will and Grace. She was lovely. But a lot of the people I hired over the years – not only do you have to pay them a lot of money, but they're all crazy. And they come with their own <laughs> baggage. Like, they come blowing in, like, absolutely spinning out and, like, flipping out and have with all a lot of, you know, just some some problems. So I thought, God. And then the other thing is I didn't ever feel comfortable. I always felt like, let me just kind of do my own because I know at least then I'm going to feel. I didn't do that. During Will and Grace, I did it later. Yeah. But I, I'm at least I'm going to feel comfortable. Like for a talk show or something, I'd rather just pick it out myself because I'm going to feel better. Yeah. I, I feel that way about hair and makeup. Mm-hmm. And I do the few times I've gotten that, you know, of course I would do it when I was on Chelsea lately. And I had a great relationship with that girl and stuff. But then there was, it just took like one time to go with a bare face and hate what they did to now I always it I'll always do my own hair and makeup but then I'll be like zhuzh me up contour it a little bit more tease the hair a little more whatever mm-hmm. but I come to, because I'm like that will stress me out before an appearance mm-hmm. and then if I don't like it then I'm thinking about the makeup artist point of view and then I'm thinking about the makeup artist doing a TikTok about how I was a bitch oh. doing the makeup which is now so like every day there's a there's a story about some stylist makeup artist hairdresser saying this person didn't pay me this person didn't tip me this person do they name the people oh yeah <gasps> or they're like they didn't or they said they were going to tag me and they didn't and oh and i'm god. just like god i mean i i just want well, to thank god i could do my own stuff because i'm like that's horrible it really is. And, and, and people are just dying for the bad stories about people. They're just dying for them. I so, know. like, you could have met one person one time. And then it's well, like, well, good luck anyone else hiring you. It, but at the same time, like, it is it's just, better to do your own because then also. And you are I, stressed too. So, you're not going to be a delight getting no. ready before a major event. You're going to be nervous. You're not going to be thinking about the feelings of the girl well, that's teasing your hair. You never have as much time as you think you have. So right. you're always rushed. Yeah. And then what happens with me if I don't, if it doesn't, if I feel like my hair or my makeup or both don't look right, then I go upstairs and I try to fix yes, it. Yes, yes, I've done that too. Ugh. And then their feelings are hurt. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh God. Ugh. <laughs> No, I know. It is so traumatic. I know it's not as fun as but it is stressful. It's not as fun as you think. Because, like, I remember, like, as a young girl, I'd be like, you know, oh, if I could be a model. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I thought about comedy and things like that. I always thought about being an actress and I always loved watching the awards. But, like, when you'd watch, like, someone, like, with the fan flowing, like, a Brooke Shields, and I was like, oh, to do a photo shoot and have people do my hair and makeup. And like the first time I did that for like to get headshots, I was like, oh my God, this is so much more tiresome, more stressful and more like, like so not as fun as you think it is. There's not, I, there's nothing worse. I mean, I, I don't have a princess complex. Like I don't like to get dressed up. I don't have any dressy clothes. I have nothing. I have nothing. Like if I had to Go to something nice tomorrow. I couldn't go because I don't have anything. And I don't like to get dressed up. And so I find it all very stressful. And photo shoots. Oh, my God. When we started Will and Grace, like 
Deborah Messing had done so many more shows. Yeah. And she had had so much, and Eric, they had had so much more experience doing interviews and photo shoots. And they are both really good at it and very photogenic too, extremely. And so, you know, they knew all the things and they were so comfortable. And I was an absolute basket case and so was Sean. And I remember <laughs> we had, this is going to sound, Johnny and Marie Osmond used to have a yeah. daytime talk yes, show. Yes, I was on it, yes. And early on, we had an interview on set, all four of oh, us. Oh, no, I was just on hers. She had one later on just oh, by Marie. herself. Yeah, yeah, but okay, this Johnny was, Marie. And okay, so Johnny on. came and he was interviewing us, and we were on the set of Will and Grace. And I, we got done, and I absolutely, like, I, I walked off. And I, I burst into tears. I was so stressed out. And I, I thought, oh, everything I just said was so stupid. Not that they cared about me. They were more interested in the people that they yeah. you know, knew about. And, um, oh, it was so stressful. I just – and I couldn't get the hang of it. And I felt like it was so fake. And it is. And I felt like <laughs> photo shoots are so fake. And they are. Yeah. You know? And so that's what's really hard about it. Yeah. You have to know how to, like, flip into that. And have fun with it and everything. Okay, well, let, since we're talking about that really quick, I want to jump to the Met Ball. Um, oh, yeah. This girl. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put my glasses how on. How do you pronounce her name? Anokai. Uh-huh. Anokai. What is she in? I don't She. Know. I think she was the most beautiful of the night. I mean, so that the looks theme, unbelievable. She yeah. wore a, 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 this was a jumpsuit. What was the theme exactly? The theme Sleeping was a good beauty. the good the theme was a good theme as far as pretty dresses because it was Sleeping Beauty in the garden of whatever. So anything that looked you know like gardeny, like princessy, flowery, like really worked well. Mm-hmm. So there were a lot, you know how some years it's just like all weird stuff. This was probably the most normal looking, pretty, flattering stuff. I usually don't like it. And I liked it this year. I thought everybody looked really cool. Like I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was cool this year. And that some of the makeup too was just incredible. And I think though, this is what I always think about. about, And then I think about this with four award show too. So maybe like whenever I watch him, because I don't go to them where, I mean, I've gone to like a red carpet, but it's never me you know, and my car is being held back. And I'm never in that, never been in that situation, right? And there's just such a que- so many questions I have, especially this. Like, so you have all these people that put you in this outfit and do your makeup. So each person has like eight people. Okay, then they have to get in this van, and some of them have these big dresses. So they have to like stand up in the van. Then that takes them to the Met thing, mm-hmm. and then they take the photos and stuff. And then what? Then does then after the photos before they sit down for their chicken breast? Then does the group come and then? change them again and then take that big dress out like all of that logistic stuff i i can't how can you even get certain dresses into you can't sit down in some of them so that's why they have a couple different outfits but then where do they go to change that are they just going to the local the the average bathroom inside of no they must have rooms for people to change like i noticed that um um zendaya yeah she had to Two or three. Look, she had three outfits. She, oh, yeah. really? She looked great. I love her. I think she's cool. Um, she looked great. And then, but did you see Cardi B? Yes. <laughs> like, how I, do you get that into a car? Well, you then, t- so that outfit, then she changed and she had just like a cute red dress on. Let me mm. see if I have her. Um, I don't think, no, if I do. Oh, here she is. So then when they went to the after party, she just showed up in like a normal red dress. Oh, yeah. But like, yes, but, you know, I guess if you're going to do this thing, I feel like did this really I feel like this wasn't a big deal like 15 years ago, the Met Gal. I feel like it's been exploded. Yes. No, I know. I don't even remember it until about maybe 10 years ago. I do feel like the Kardashians kind of made everybody like want to do it. Everyone like, why are they here? I'm like, they're the only reasons anyone cares. So like if you don't want them to come around anymore, fine. But like nobody t- this has been going on for a long time and nobody really talked about it. I think really just rich people went and gave their money. Mm-hmm. And then it became this whole thing that designers like bought tables. And um, OK, so then we have Kim oh, and yeah. she 
put out her own photos on her own Instagram before she walked on the red carpet. Oh, uh, look at her people... waist. Oh, God. So, okay, the waist is really oh, disturbing. No. That I... doesn't look good. That's creepy. It's that's creepy. Scary. It's so creepy. And if you zoom in, but like, that's surgery. That's not when you zoom in. It was like it's like red in underneath. Like she's. It's so tight and painful. And that's what people were saying. So in this photo, so this is real life. This is other people's photos. So she didn't doctor. Her no, this photo. is the photo from, from. So that's when you take some ribs out. I think. Right, because I don't think it could be like. I mean, that in real I don't life. know, but it said Kim Kardashian. This is just. A, oh no, but she wore those comment. trainers too, right? That traitor stuff is gone. Nobody talks about those traitors anymore. Yeah. That used to be a thing. He doesn't do that. So Kim Kardashian once again showing showing up at a look that does nothing but showcase how artificially small she can make her waist. It it honestly was disturbing. Like it was, you know, she was the first person to do. She put the Ozempic on the map. They won't say they did it, but she did that to get into the. Um, Marilyn Monroe won two uh-huh, years ago. Right. How do you lose 14 pounds in a week or two yeah. weeks or whatever? But then this is like, I don't know. It like do pains you, me. Also, that dress, I, I just saw the, a picture from the front and I was like, I don't, that wasn't my, okay, let's waste a sign. No, and then, and well, Kim, then, it, and then it's sheer. Aside. It's all the way sheer with the sheer butt. Oh, I'm right. so sick of the sheer look. I Me too. I'm so over it. But I also felt like I didn't, it wasn't my favorite look. Just Kim Kardashian herself and her waist aside, <laughs> I didn't, just the dress itself, I thought there were so many other ones that were way, yes, way better. And then she, everyone's like, what's with this weird sweater? And she said, the sweater was part of the theme. Like, I'm in yeah. a garden and it's my boyfriend's gray sweater and I put it on. So she, what? that was her backstory for this outfit. Sleeping Beauty's boyfriend has a gray sweater. <laughs> okay. All right. Sure. Then this is um, Emrata and Emily. her boobs. And oh, so then she wore a whole sheer thing. What's her name? This is Emily Ratowski. Oh, Ratajutski, whatever. Yeah. And um, she's very pretty, and she's always, I don't know. She's just, I and then the whole nude thing, like, I'm like. I, it's, I feel like that, I feel like that was good for about, like, six or yes. seven years ago, that was good for a minute when I was like, I can't believe I can see everything. Yes. But now it's like, put it back on. Now because I feel like you stand out if you. If you don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't do it and you, like, are not showing your, your nips and she your butt crack. crazy, you know, amazing boobs. Though. Her boobs and her ass are oh amazing. God. Yeah. And I get it. You're like, yeah. I might why consider- not? Otherwise, Because otherwise, I don't have that much going on. And I still True. have a great ass, and I might not have this ass forever. So if if you're going to invite me, I want my photo. If I'm going to go through all this trouble, I want my photos to go somewhere. So I kind of see that. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not going to gain anything in being subtle at this thing. Yeah. And But, I mean, it's absolute How? work doing all this. But I guess once is you- it legal, though? How is it legal? Like, why is that <laughs> not indecent exposure? I'm just curious. I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not a judgment. I don't know who's I'm just doing, saying, like, isn't that against the law? I think there's the been law? times where Instagram would take down nips. A nipple. And then, but then there's other times, like, I'll be watching a reality show and some girl's boobs are out and they just barely fuzz it out. Yeah. And then you're like, what if men could have their nipples out? So I don't really, I just think it's like, who knows? Yeah. I guess the police aren't, like, busting into the... <laughs> you know, to the Matt Gala. And then this was Pamela Anderson. And this was, I was like, what the, f-? so I saw this thing around her hair. She looks beautiful. And she has this, oh, yeah. but she has this feather thing around her. It kind of looks like her hair. Right. Yeah. And I go, is this supposed to be like Sleeping Beauty woke up from her nap or whatever? Mm-hmm. But then I saw another one and I go, oh, it's just a feather. Oh, it's just the angle. But whoever thought of that feather should have thought about that. Yeah. They should have said, we should choose a feather that doesn't match the color of your hair. Yeah. And I or feel no, like it no seems a little all. bit like an afterthought, you know, like maybe you don't need it. She didn't need the feather because then look from the front, it's really good. And now mm, she's been doing the no makeup didn't thing, need it. but she did put a little makeup on this day. I love the no makeup thing. I thought that was so great that she started doing that. I like her because you know Nick. Nick, my husband was in this um, the top, Pam and Tommy, yes. and I thought that was so good because it really showed like how 
you know, she was the show. loser in that whole thing. It was really interesting. I thought it was good. Yeah, I thought it was we, really We well really done. liked it. But what I found interesting in watching it with my sons is that they were like, oh, my God, she just needs to get over it. Like, who cares? Like, this is not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Because to them, hmm. that isn't a big deal that someone is out there having sex with their husband. Hmm. But to, but I'm like, yeah, but do you see this was like 25 years ago and why that was like she was trying to take seriously and it was stolen and it was this and it was put out. And it really was so crazy that they did, that they really didn't get any is, money for it. It yeah. was crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And then everybody just thought, well, I found it. So too bad. Mm-hmm. That was really but that was like very well done. And then and then she that it did her own thing. And so um, her own like documentary kind of about her life and yeah she's still so stunning i'd love to see her like do something more me too act or something I, but I also agree. when you have a perfect face like that and it's this- nice that she was at this and that but look at her waist you know what i mean like like that's small but it's not great. It, but it's not insane no that's it's true. small and it's she's got nice big you know boobies yeah, that's but true. like also, she is the thing that made her so famous that I think is so interesting today is like, and she was discovered, you know, at a base, some sporting game. Someone saw her face and then they're mm. like, oh, would you like to be a model for this beer or whatever? And it's because she had such a perfect nose and such a perfect smile and she had like naturally full lips. And you just couldn't buy that back then. Mm-hmm. Right. And now anyone can have good teeth. Anyone can have a perky nose. And anyone everybody can looks have lips, the same. And everybody looks the same. Like yeah. I thought when I saw this Emily, I thought that was Kendall Jenner. Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. Yeah, they all, yeah. And she I was like, like, and not saying that either of them have stuff done, but they people do, they do a little tweaks and they really start to look alike. Queen Latifah and her partner Ebony made their rare red carpet appearance. Now, I think this is really great because I... She was one of those people that I was like, I feel like she didn't come out for a long time, but everybody knew she was a lesbian. Yeah, yeah. And then she had a talk show and yeah. I was on that for two years <laughs> and it was like, I'm going to be real. And I, But then she wasn't honest about her relationship, hmm. oh. which I can see why she didn't want to be. Yeah, but especially at the same time, on daytime. Yeah, yeah. but especially, but, uh, at, but also at that time, like how real can you really be if you unfortunately feel that you have to keep the most important relationship in your life a secret. Mm-hmm. You can, I mean, I can't imagine if all, like, I talk about my husband all the time, and if all of a sudden, you know, I had to be like, well, you know, like, if the flip was the norm, and all of a sudden I always had to be like, well, my wife, Patty, and, you know, and I have this, you know, like, if you think about it that way, it just is, like, so weird and strange. So it's nice to see that they got to go and like have fun. I think that's great. Yeah. And like, you know, look great. And then this was weird. This was Doja Cat. I saw that. And then she went in just a towel and a towel on her head and did this weird makeup. But so did you, so do you have a picture of her dress? No, it was just a towel. It really was just a towel. Oh, because so I, I saw a dress. But then I think it was did, all then... wet. Like her tears had soaked. Oh, the wait, dress. maybe I have a different one then. I Who? think I have it. I, so many people change so many times. I'm like, maybe I don't have the right one then. Yeah, I think I have it. But I get like you're you're with a team and they're like, let's do something different and creative to match this theme. So I just feel like it's not really a, it's not so different than like going to the Oscars and wearing something weird. Like you're supposed to be wearing something kind of weird. Well, the thing I liked about, so I don't remember the towel on her head in the photo I saw. I remember the tears and then she's wearing this white, very plain dress that looks like a long t-shirt and she's kind of holding it up oh. like crotch level. She's kind of holding it. And then it's all soaking wet, like her tears soaked oh. her, and it's kind of sheer. But it was I thought it, I thought that I thought it was a good idea. Yeah, actually. it was cool then. Yeah. All right. So this I want to get your opinion on this. This is about the roast. Uh Nikki Glazer was, you know, did really well. I think she was the only female um comedian that did the roast of Mm -hmm. Tom Brady. It was at the forum. It was for Netflix as a joke. I've watched most of it. Um, But now, of course, there's some controversial stuff because the whole point of a roast is really going there and being cruel. And we haven't seen them in a while since Comedy Central ended them. 
I personally, as a stand-up, have always been like very uncomfortable. I've I, never wanted to do it. I don't it. like watching them. I don't like them. I just feel like, first of all, to be to be good at it, you have to go there and you cannot care about anything. You have to anything. be John Rickles. You have to be so <laughs> and 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 she was she was great at it. It's it's her thing. She's good at it. You have to be Ricky Gervais, you know, like yeah. where you really well do anything and you don't care. Yeah. Well, a lot of them didn't care and they went for some things that now they're getting some shit for. So mm-hmm. with Tom Brady, a lot of the jokes were easy jokes. You're good looking. You look gay. Whatever. Mm. Then Kevin Hart is there. He's the host. You're short. You're short. You're short. You know, and what I remember from the past is there would always be when and Pamela Anderson, I remember this was the one that turned me off to the roast. They did a Pamela Anderson roast years ago on Comedy Central. And it was all about or maybe she was sitting there. Maybe it wasn't her roast. Maybe she's one of the people. And then you then they get to roast her, too. And it was so many things about her vagina and her yeah. vagina size and all this oh other God. stuff. And I just remember watching it and I'm like, she has two boys. Like, why Why is she doing this? And I think at the time they would get people to do the Comedy Central roast because, quite frankly, it was a big paycheck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I think sometimes people were like, well, it'll make me relevant again or I can laugh at the joke or I'll at least be part of the joke or whatever. But then, so with this one, it was, you know, there were some good, you know, fun moments, but these are the things they're getting criticized for. So she said on Howard Stern, she did cut a joke about Tom Brady kissing his son. So there was this this video that went viral that he was on a table, Tom Brady, this was years ago, like probably eight years ago. Maybe it was that long ago. Whatever. He was laying on to getting some physical therapy done or whatever. And they were they were filming it. And his son walks in. And I think it was his older son. And he's like, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, well, come here and give me a kiss. So the kid leaves already just kisses him, like on the lips, whatever. And it went out. And, you know, 20% of the people thought it was sweet and normal. And 80% was like, what? that kid's too old to be kissed on the lips. And it became a big thing. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, I had a joke about it, but then I decided to take it out. She goes, because we decided the the kids shouldn't be part of the thing. And but she's like, I had a dad that kissed me on the lips, you know, whatever. I'm fine. And but I get why it's like awkward and why some people think it's weird or whatever. So I kind of thought, okay, so she decided to to drop the joke. Then she said the joke on on um, on Howard, which, you know, was funny. So. But in the special, they do talk about him. Um, he was he was with Bridget Moynihan and she was pregnant when they broke up or they broke up and then she found out she was pregnant. Mm. And she's gone on to have a, a good life. I don't think she wanted him. I don't think she felt like she was being stood up. And then he went to get with um, Giselle, who's now he's divorced from. Mm-hmm. So there were jokes about leaving your pregnant wife and all of that. I don't really think. Then there was also jokes about... Giselle and how much money she would get. So she's not happy today. Um, she's pissed over the divorce jokes, according to people. None of these people seem like they have like wild senses of humor, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are not the people who seem like they have rollicking senses of humor. <laughs> well, I think he was, I think Tom Brady was okay with everything. It was more of a couple other things. And then this one. There were Aaron Hernandez's jokes. And to remind people, he was a professional football player. He was, I guess, on the Patriots, same team. And then he was the one, do you remember the story? He was the one that then he killed somebody, like in a in a drive, like a shooting situation. Mm-hmm. And then when he was in prison, he ended his life and he hung himself. Right, and he did it in a way so people thought so that his uh, fiance or or mother of his child and that child would get his money, and I don't know, it was a big thing. So now she's coming forward. Wait, they made some jokes about him. They did. <gasps> oh my gosh! Something about a ring around the neck, meaning because he hung himself. God, and so it was just like that. That was just not. That's not. And making like, oh, you know, because they were they were teammates and making some throwaway jokes about, I don't know, some reference to him. And. Yeah, I mean, it's it's 
it's hard. There were there yeah. were uh, there were a few people that I was like, okay, that's one joke. I like I was watching it, and it was um, and I love Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer, and their whole thing. They had a screen, and they were going through all these jokes, and they were laughing, and they were doing well. But then there was like a Hitler thing, and I was like, I just don't. I listen. People have made jokes about Hitler for a long time, but at this particular time. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I just think that would be the one that I'd be like, yeah, like we have 12. Yeah. We don't need 13 <laughs> jokes. Like right. if we're gonna like, yeah, but then it was like, hey, you know, I get that comedian way of like, we're not gonna, you know, st- whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's out there and it's like, you don't like it, but it's live. So it was a live thing. And I think it was like, we're going to be edgy. We're going to bring back comedy and you can't be sensitive. And that's the thing but it well i agree with that that you can't worry about being right you know it's gotten to the point where you can't say anything um but so i agree that that does that is the enemy of comedy because comedy has to keep pushing the envelope but no i think there's a time and a place also you know for certain things but the whole thing is like yeah there you at a certain point you do have to just be like and I used to be like, oh, my God, no, that's not what I meant. And people would write, I don't like that you said that on the show. And then I finally, like, basically blocked all those people. And now I don't really see it anymore. <laughs> yeah. And I don't go to the places where I could see it. Yeah. Because at a certain point, you're like, I just, I'm not going to be able to be creative. And, no. like, I'm going to say things. And I'm not even controversial. It just, it's just having a different opinion than somebody. And then be like, I can't believe that you you know, think this or said that. And I was like, oh, God, there's a 10 billion other ones to listen to. But... I, I, I mean, for the most part, like people really liked it and, you know, and people did well in their delivery. But I thought those were interesting things that are not, you know, that some people are like, mm, did they go too far or not? And then you read the comments and a lot of people are like, no, we have to bring back comedy and just deal with it. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I know I, I barely go on social media anymore. Um, I just I don't know. Something just happened. Like, I, I just got I just, I just didn't want to do it anymore. But um but I mean, I totally get it. And I, I was only on it for like maybe three or four years. I was really into it. I thought it was fun. Yeah, you Instagram. have so many followers. I know. And I hardly ever You're like a million anymore. seven or something. Yeah, not that many. But No, I, you do. I just was on it. You're over a million. Do you know that you're over a million? Yeah, I do know that. But I, I just, I guess I liked Instagram, but then I just started feeling like, ugh, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's just tough. Now, there's a fun kind of juicy story. Do you remember 16 Candles? Of course you do, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So Jake Ryan, oh, he was so gorgeous. He's the one, you know, at the end of the sh- the one that she likes. He starred in the movie. He was just a model. He was handpicked by John Hughes. He really hadn't acted much. Mm-hmm. He was 23 at the time. And anyway, then he was such a babe. It was such a classic movie. But then he dropped out of acting completely. He's been with his wife forever and dropped out of acting completely. I don't know what he does. He's 63. But now his daughter is like a famous model. She's gorgeous. Wait, is 16 Candles the one where Molly Ringwald puts lipstick on with her boobs, between her boobs? It's one of the two. No, that's the one where they're in detention the whole day. Oh. I think. um, No, 16 uh, Candles is so funny. I auditioned for the lipstick boobs one. Oh, wait. Yeah. So, wait. Oh, wait. That Breakfast wait. Club. Oh, wait. To be which part? Uh, Ma- I guess Molly Ringwald. I don't know. Or, or short, you know, it was kind or, of mix or, and match. Wait, but were you... Okay, there were two girls but in I it. did the... There was the Molly I did Ringwald the, who was... I did the boobs. Oh, the well, then that thing. was the part. Then yeah. you were going to be the But I think the they, they read us person. for, like, different parts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, and it was um, Allie... Oh, Allie Sheedy. Allie Sheedy was the one that was, like, the kind of emo one. Yeah. And then she was... Yeah, this one was so funny. It was like my favorite movie. and But it was one of those movies that then I was like so excited. You guys, you're going to die. This is the funniest movie ever. <laughs> and then my kids are kind of like, um, right. th- and then you like watch it and there's like sexual assault in it. Oh, wow. Like this girl gets, his girlfriend gets really drunk, his character's girlfriend. He doesn't care about his girlfriend anymore because he's in love with Molly Ringwald oh. because he she looked at him and he was like, that's who I want to be with. Like it was just like never would happen. But anyway, course, yeah. and and uh, and so then he tells Anthony Michael Hall, "Take my drunk girlfriend home," and she passes out. And then he looks right to the camera and he's like, "Oh, 
And then at the end, <laughs> she realizes because she thinks she's she thinks Anthony Michael Hall is Jake Ryan. Oh, so she has sex with him, but they don't show them having sex. But they just show her after going. Um, did we have to have? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, okay, you know, whatever. And it was like, wait, what? <laughs> like she was completely passed out. <laughs> he he basically said. Have your way with this drunk girl. I don't care about her anymore because she's drunk and she had a party at my house. And I'm going for this classier redhead girl. And so then he goes to the wedding and she's like, and then they have that scene where they're like sitting on the table having the cake. Isn't it so crazy how maybe that's why I dropped out of movies. Changed. (laughs) Yeah, it really things have really changed. I know. And then that's the funniest thing because that's what a lot of my friends have said. Like you know, we're all like Gen X and we're all Gen you know, raising Gen Z kids. And they'll be like, mom, like, this is so problematic. What is this thing? And I'm like, oh my God, these kids are like so much like nicer and better <laughs> than we are. Like, cause it's just, I, I, I won't remember. I just were like, oh, this was such a funny movie. And then it's like, it's like racist and like they're like why is everybody and, white uh, and then my kids now goes, are so colorblind i mean it's, yeah. it's so so different and yeah. then they're like one well, one thing my son said is like oh people all all these people actually all wore jeans like at the same time like they're watching like <laughs> fast time at ridgemont high and he's like oh everybody wore jeans like this you know yeah. and there was so and there's like there's like so much sex in those movies and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. These kids are like 14 and having sex. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's nuts. Yeah, you don't see it as much. So tell me, is there any, what else is going on? Anything that we should watch out for that you're in or doing or working on? Oh, not really. A couple things in the works, but nothing. Just enjoying your life. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I'm so glad you came. This was so oh, juicy. So and you answered fun. so many questions and yeah, everything. I'm such a fan of yours. Oh, Thanks thank for having you. me. Thank you. Thank you. This is so fun. Thank you.